Hey, Vinyl Community, it's Mazzy here, and uh, this, is, this is a first. This is the first ever communication between America, the USA, United States of America, and the United <laughs> Kingdom, ever, ever. Everyone thinks the Beatles did it with uh, All You Need Is Love on that world uh, live telecast thing, but Rob Walker is that's me. That's here, and uh, the name of your channel is Let the Music Play. And that's right. You, I'll do a link below. Uh, you don't have to do that. Oh, I'm going to do it anyway. So don't. <laughs> I, I do what I fucking want to do on my channel. I do now. Apparently, because he's so far away, he's cropped in like this. And we, I think, um, this is the view Boris Johnson wants to give all of the people of the United Kingdom. Um, that's true. Well, same with uh, Donald Trump here. We both um, very comfortable. Yeah, we're both in an agreement on here. So this is my first uh, transcontinental or across the pond uh, uh, sharing video. And we have a topic that um, a year that uh, Rob came up with. So I'm going to pass over to Rob to introduce the year and tell us why he picked that year. Yeah, hi, Mazzy. Um, yeah, I mean, we spoke a few words here and there. And I mean, I, I originally wanted to do new albums but we thought you know people might be a bit sick of that and turn off so i wanted to choose a classic year and for me there's a there's five years that are classics for me and it's between sort of 77 and 82 and for me they're five special years great years so, so right in the middle is why is it special to you why those years um well that's when i left school so you know i had no money no job prospects, no girlfriend. The only way I was up, really. So the music was what kept me going, really. That was, so a, was, tough, that was a tough time in Manchester, wasn't it? It was a tough time in the UK because um, the Conservatives had just taken power, Margaret Thatcher, etc. Oh. And there was a lot of cuts and a lot of strikes. And when I was 16 going into Manchester, it was not a pleasant experience, quite intimidating. But... Uh, yeah, so I chose 1980. So, I mean, I've got so many records and so many memories from 1980. I loved I just when you picked to... that year. I loved when you picked that year, and you'll see why as we go along. Yeah, I mean, the best band in... What is that? It's the British Pocket Atlas, and I got it because I wanted to research, and I have here West Yorkshire, uh, Manchester, and all that. So I oh, wanted okay. to research to see... This is where he is right now. <laughs> yeah, in that book there. That's me. Right there. Yeah. So okay. I wanted to show, the first record I wanted to show was like my favorite band. So that's this album. Pull it back a little bit, center it so we can see it. Yeah, a uh, little more forward. I'm directing you, perfect. Okay. So sound effects by the jam. So. The jam for me, music is more important than it's, I mean, you have kids, you get married, you get divorced, you, you fall in love with music. And that's how important it is to me. It's not just an accessory. It's my life, really. It's and the these bands, constant. It's the one thing that's constant, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. So, it, you know, this album never lets me down whatever mood I'm in. I mean, this, this is a good record to smash the kitchen up to. Um, you know, and if you, yeah. So if you see about, like a, a British term. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like gobsmacked. Gobsmacked. gobsmacked yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I'll go back to March, 1980. This record came out. So that's going underground by the jam. And that's not on this album. So when Going Underground came out, that was a really sort of anti-Margaret anti Thatcher record, anti-state, if you like. And the jam had just sort of, they'd had a big hit with Eating Rifles. They'd had a lot of hits, but not big hits. They had, you know, a good fan base, but not, not like sort of like The Police or anything like that. And then they had Eating Rifles, which was like a top five hit. And then Going Underground was released. It was a number one, straight in at number one. And that record sort of changed my life as well because 
politically it kind of woke me up. You know what it's like before you, you know, when do you turn political? I turned political when I was like 15, 16. So, and that's why I follow, that's why I follow the career of people like Billy Bragg in the 80s, you know, um, very political, but a great songwriter as well. Well, getting back to the jam, just for me, the most important band ever. And it, when I joined the VC, I joined the VC in January last year. And one of the reasons I joined was I thought there was certain bands, because the VC is American heavy. You know, you can't deny that. There's a small group of Englishmen. And, uh, it's you know, getting we didn't larger. Have... I like that. It's getting larger. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, put an ad, I put an advert in the paper and people are responding. But, I'm surprised there's not more people from the UK. Yeah. But it's, I mean, on Instagram, um i comment to people you know i see big collections of people have on instagram and i say have a go and the guy ian the northeast spinner he's just started a, a stage you know a channel um and uh, there's a few other people who said yeah i'm gonna have a go so you know the more the merrier because you get like you get a you get a british perspective in america you show records by the jam and you talk about them as though not you but other people, they don't really understand the significance of the band. I mean, there's still people now riding around on scooters with Paul Weller haircuts singing jam songs. I mean, I'm not one of those people. Um, you know, I like getting into new music as well. But when it comes to my favourite band of all time, it's not even a question. It's easy to answer. Well, that's it's a good a one. Yeah, I, a jam. I'm, a bit, I'm a jam fan too. And we think we, I don't know if I talked to you about it or... <laughs> I'm a jam fan and I have, I got in the style counts a little bit. Um, yeah. I didn't really get into Paul Weller a lot. I don't love it. And then a friend of mine who found all the originals had bought, he, <laughs> he lives in Portland, Oregon. He gave yeah. me his whole collection of the Paul Weller reissues last year that yeah. he got it found originals. And um, I'm still going through them. I love some of them. And anyway, I, I better pick mine. They're inconsistent. Yeah, but I love the gym, especially the first couple albums, all mod cons. And I did see them coming through them in the late 70s once. So, um, all mod cons is my favorite. Yeah. So, yeah. I, what, 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 when you picked 1980, what I loved about it, because um, I'm a, I consider myself a big Anglophile, obviously because of the Beatles thing and everything. Um, I first went to uh, England in 78, but I actually went in spring of 1980 with my buddy David, who we did the book with, and we went there to photograph that spring. And I remember the first record I'm gonna show is a UK record I picked up at the Virgin Store, the mega store, I guess, on Oxford yeah. Street in London. And I, I didn't know anything about this band, but I thought the name was the most hysterical name, and that was Echo and the Bunny Man. And got this album, hadn't heard it, there we go, yeah. This is on uh, Code. It's Code One, Corova, uh, Wea. Yeah. So this is my UK copy. I didn't know anything about it. I hadn't heard a song, but I bought this. I'm going to show these two at once just because for some reason I can't find my UK one or I must have got rid of it because this is an American one. But I bought these two at the same time. Uh, the, you know, the first Psychedelic Furs and the first oh, right. Bunny Man. Because there was sort of this new psychedelic thing in Britain of names then. Mm. The names got weirder, right? A little bit in 19. Yeah, explodes. Yeah, I've got that here, but it's a different cover. Yeah, this is an American one. Um, I guess we're not always alternating, but these three, this was a big year for me for British music, and with these kind of, I don't want to say post punk because I don't consider these bands post punk, but they got in more of a psychedelic. They're not Brit pop. Yeah. What do you call this stuff? I don't even know good music well yeah there you go but it had you know and i originally i didn't even know that they got these guys were from liverpool um, yeah and that's my uh, favorite band from liverpool pardon me that's my favorite band from liverpool more than the beatles yeah <laughs> okay that's okay that's fair <laughs> uh, but the but these three around i don't remember when this one came out. i didn't get it in the uk i got it when i got back but these three just had this 1980 yeah yeah, it's just this great sound in, in that. And obviously, I, um, reward Julian Cope. I'm a big Julian yeah. Cope fan. And um, I actually saw Echo on that first tour, the same with Psychedelic Furs when they came to America. These bands were playing like kind of smaller, mid sized venues. It was cheap to see them. 
And it yeah. was great because they were doing a little of the British version of the punk and a little of the psychedelic mix in yeah. there somehow. But I just love these records. So. Yeah, Ian, Ian McCulloch, he's, he's like a typical scouser. <laughs> right, right. So he's a bit of an asshole. Because, but, but that spring, we went into London, and I think that was the first time in my life I ever, I remember renting a car out of Paddington Station, and it was a stick shift. And of course, being an American, you know, the wrong, the opposite side of the yeah. street, I come out of the station trying to drive on the other side and almost yeah. run over some woman crossing the street. <laughs> we headed out to Wales and to Liverpool and, uh, yeah. you know, it's never made it to Manchester, unfortunately. I mean, I, I went to see Echo and the Bunny Men as well. And my favorite gig of all time is a jam. But my second favorite is Echo and the Bunny Men. They were fantastic. You know, they were great live band, the atmosphere. I saw them at the Free Trade Hall in Manchester. And yeah, I've seen Tea Drop Explodes as well. So okay. the first time I saw, I, the first time I got, saw Billy Bragg, he opened for Echo and the Bunny Man. And I had never yeah. heard of Billy Bragg. And I yeah. thought, and he just blew the crowd away. I mean, just one guy on yeah. the guitar when he did that yeah. thrashing. He had that, he had that guitar that looked like he'd made it himself. Right, right, right. Yeah. And he, All right. He just, yeah. What do you got? Well, He's 1983, isn't he? So we can't, yeah. we can't really have him. That was a little later. Right. So I'm going to show now. It's a band that everybody's got all the records, but nobody shows them on the VC really because everyone's got the records and they've got nothing to say about them. But they're the first band that I ever got into in 1978. So it's uh, these. The police. I almost picked that. I didn't this time. Yeah. Now, me and the police, I mean, in 78, I kind of discovered uh, Atlantis more, and then Regatta de Blanc came out, and I was obsessed with the police. They were like the first band that I kind of, I mean, I didn't realize at the time that Sting was, you know, not, not a great, but I just went with the music. I like that reggae feel to them, and when Zenya Amandata came out, I've got loads of copies of that album. Every time I see it, I just pick it up. I just like it. And it's just got, I mean, it's got the track, When the World is Burning Down, You Make the Best of What's Still Around, which is like the longest track name ever. But it's one of my favorite songs. I love that song. And I love so much about that early police. I'm not so keen on synchronicity, which was, I think that was big in America, that album. It was huge. That's when they were, yeah. became more of a stadium band. But the yeah. sound of that album is really good. The bass playing on yeah. that record, oh God, yeah. the recording of it. But, but I think it's because everybody's really got the records and nobody really talks about the police, how good they were. Yeah. And I, you know, I'm not ashamed to say that I'm, I was a big police fan and I still like the police now. Oh, I, I love them too. I can't you listen know. to, I have a couple of Sting CDs. For some no. reason, I just can't listen to them anymore. But I love that no. tempestuous, uh, I mean, Stuart Copeland and Sting just fucking hate each other. Yeah. And I, in a way, it, it's the tension in the music kind of yeah. comes across in a good way. But I love Stuart Copeland. He's my favorite drummer. Yeah. I just, I love the energy. And I love that guy. He did a, a program on the BBC last year all about sort of the history of drumming. I've seen that. It's and, great. And his enthusiasm and his warmth to people, so yeah. engaging. Yeah. And he's, he's you know, he's one of my favorite Americans, apart from you. Oh, thank you. I feel like I'm, well, I, I got a drum set right here that was my buddy's who passed away when I moved to Seattle from San Francisco. His wife gave me his drum set. Oh, okay. We grew up since we were 12 in bands, and uh, so that's yeah. kind of sentimental for me. So, okay, all right, well, I'm going now with a, a band I just fell in love with when it came out. And it's kind of, these are, some of these are very obvious choices because it was, it was a great year for music. But the first yeah. Pretenders record, I fell in love yeah. with Lucy Hind. I didn't initially know she was an American, then I got into it. I'd love, it's funny, there's a song on here that was on the first Kinks album, a Kinks song, Stop Your yeah, Sobbing. Stop it. Yeah. And I, as much as I, I mean, I heard it here and it sounded so familiar, but even being a big Kinks fan, I, for some reason, I couldn't place it right away. And she just really went with that. But Obviously, everyone knows this song. Just Precious. When I first heard Precious, that might yeah. have been the first, just the way she sang. She sings so sexy. 
Uh, Chris Thomas produced it, um, right? Yeah. And, I think uh, Stop Your Sobbing was produced by Nick Lowe, that one track. But I just love this song. And I saw them when they came here. Actually, that trip in 1980, when we were doing our Beatle book, we went to Hamburg again. David and I uh, just happened to be walking about this kind of mid-size venue, and they were playing that night. So we went to see them in Hamburg that night yeah. in 1980, in the spring. But I, that's, and that was a, I think that was the first time I saw them. And then I saw them when I got home. But um, this is, I like this. This song, Precious Contains Language which may be <laughs> unsuitable for radio play. <laughs> fuck off. Isn't that, doesn't she say fuck off in that song? Um, anyway, you, we all know this album, great record, but yeah. um, what a great record, right? Well, did you see, Matt? When I spoke about Chrissy Hine, I said she's a bit rough around the edges, but maybe I like him like that. <laughs> I did, of course I heard you say that. Yeah. I think well, I might, if I didn't comment, I commented to myself. No, you, I think you commented, yeah. But that was because I put that record as 1979 on my video. Well, you know, it's, it, it came out, um, it came, well, here it says, like, it's not, it came out in America in 1980. It says 7980, yeah. the singles in 79, but the yeah. actual LP came out in America in 1980. So, in fact, yeah. there's another crossover album I have here that came out, like, January. Yeah. And, um, you know. Yeah. You can guess which person pulled me up on my comments about it being from 70, uh, 1980. Who do you think it was? Who pulled me up? Who would it be? Your friend, John. <laughs> we were just texting each other because he, I texted him. I said, I'm getting ready to do a video with you. And uh, he, uh, Rob is running late. I said, it's like Italian train time, you know, the schedules of, the, on the train <laughs> of Italy. Um, did he, did he bust you on that? That's kind of like you yeah. busted me in the Manchester bands, which I get it, but it's kind of like someone doing the Doobie Brothers here because they're from San Jose. That's actually yeah. closer than San Francisco, but you know, you do what you can. In the UK, because obviously we're, it's a lot smaller, so if someone's from Wigan, that's actually closer to Liverpool. So that's, it's- Got it. You know, but I made a mistake on my video because I had the Chemical Brothers has been from Manchester. Now they were formed in Manchester, but they're actually from London. So I, you know, I, I made a mistake as well. See, so. that, in those videos, bands are formed somewhere, they go somewhere else, yeah. you know, like, yeah. I mean, anyway, we can get on about that. But anyway. I love it how people bust you though. Normal copy I got at the time, and it's still my original copy, and it's still beautiful. I've got a copy of that down here. Yep, all right. Uh, what else do we have? Let's have this one. Oh, God. I love that record. I didn't pick it. Good choice. Black C. Yeah, XTC. So, Black C. Uh, Black C. I mean, it's not my favorite XTC album. Do you have the green bag? No. No, it's is it green? No. I'd have thrown it in the bin anyway. I, I wouldn't have bothered with that anyway. I'm not a record collector. I'm a music. It's about the music. I, I, when it comes, it came with uh, this green bag, and then yeah, in America. It did. I don't know if it did in the UK, but in America, yeah. Yeah, the Jam album came in a, a gift bag as well, the, the gift. But I got rid of that as well. So well, anyway. a gift bag? It's actually a yeah. sleeve part of the art. Yeah, like a, a pink and white bag, yeah. So I don't want to do what I did with John's video. I, I ran and got something, and he hated talking to nobody. No, don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> don't leave me, Matty. Don't leave me. <laughs> so, I'll leave everyone yeah, eventually. XTC, XTC I, I went to see them in 1980 um at the end of the year and i i loved drums and wires i wasn't a massive fan of the first two albums but i wasn't aware of them at the time right i got drums and wires when it came out because i loved making plans for nigel and i think that's a great album i prefer drums and wires to black sea but when black sea came out it had generals and majors on it oh, right. which which i loved but then at the time i didn't i mean i'm not um, I like the Kinks. Well, because they're before 1978, then they don't get my full attention. That's how I work. So with the Kinks, um, I've sort of been delving into the Kinks a little bit. And Respectable Street is so much like the Kinks. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Um, and, and you can hear a lot of blur in XTC as well. Um, so XTC have always been, a, I mean, and the career, I mean, in America, they quite quite successful sort of. 
the, in on a, the college circuit, maybe. They, well, they were um, popular on the FM things. They never really had any uh, top radio hits. They had a cult no. following. And of course, yeah. we all know the and Andy Partridge uh, fear of flying or fear, fear yeah. of touring and stuff. But I feel oh, fortunate yeah. there's a club called The Stone on Broadway in San Francisco, North Beach. It's where all the strip clubs were and stuff. But I actually saw them 82, 83. I forgot what record came out. And then they didn't tour. That was the last tour in America. Yeah. And But yeah. I, it was a club that held maybe, I don't know, 150 people or 200, not, not a huge club. And it was great. It was great. It's too bad he was kind of screwed up with that yeah. because I think that ruined some of their popularity, right? When they were getting, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I think also when they did, um, is it Skylark in the album with Todd Rundgren? <laughs> the tempestuous Todd, one, right? Yeah. Todd Rundgren was saying Andy Partridge, they don't, they don't tour. So he can analyze every song and he's really anal about everything. And I think, I mean, for me, XTC are one of those bands who've kind of, most bands release three, four good albums and then they sort of fade a little bit. Whereas with XTC, they seem to get stronger. I mean, English Settlement is one of my favorite albums. Yeah, I have some of my CDs here. I have a whole series of Andy Partridge demos yeah. that came out on CD. I just love anything he does, I'll grab. So Yeah. yeah. And they're just like a pure British sounding band. Yeah. And they're yeah. one of my favorite bands. So, yeah. I'm always, it's like, if you've been watching, there's like a thread going around now about uh, A to Z. Of, I, ha um, I, I saw Hannah's, the first one. I don't yeah. know if that's the first one. Uh, yeah. I saw Hannah, Omaha, Introvert. Um, and then I just saw Shamrock do a version. Yeah. Um, and when you get to X, you've got to show XTC, haven't you? <laughs> I guess I got to jump on that. I'm not. I, I'm into these twofers right now, and so I did. I did that. I did that video in June last year. Why? Well, but the XTC, I could go with X, or I could do X, which I have here actually. Uh, but you know, I would probably do XTC first. But yeah. All right, I'm going with the record. You know, there's this whole thing like people like to do. Uh, they, pe there's a certain segment of people like to talk about the Beatles' wide album. Oh, it should have been a single album. And here's what we should do it and. That should have been a single album. It's too extensive. Well, I love that this is a, yep, a triple album, a fucking triple yeah. record. Um, this is my copy from 1980 that I got, and it's still brilliant. Uh, yeah. One sleeve, not even a gatefold, but I don't give a shit. And yeah. I mean, just the dubbing, the dub, the, the reggae dub stuff on it. This is a great feeling record. And yeah. You know, I, I'm still, I'll still go with London Calling as their best for me, but this is amazing, right? I mean, yeah, this is my- Magnificent this, Seven, that 12 inch alone was great when it came out. Yeah, I had that on 12 inch, Magnificent yep. Seven. I love that. Yeah. I love that song. But it's got like that Hitsville UK, which sounds nothing like anything. I don't- Is that but, the one with the kid? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I love still, that. Yeah. I mean- well, I'll, Somebody Got Murdered and Rebel Waltz are great. This is, this is one of those albums that I just put, I just randomly picked one of the discs and just put it on. Yep. Career Opportunities, never, the, the version yep. of the kid singing, oh God, this is such a great record. Uh, everybody who wants, I mean, it's not even punk really. Uh, no. It, it's, you know, White people doing reggae used to be a dangerous thing, and not many people pull it off. I was listening in my car the other day, and it, I shouldn't get, I'll go on a tangent, but I was listening to a Blondie Best Of CD in my car. And I love Blondie, but I haven't really listened to it in a while. It was, and it had the Tide is High, and you know, which is very reggae-oriented, very pop. And that could have been so schmaltzy, and it is in a way, but it kind of works still. Yeah. So white people doing reggae, I mean, it's obviously it's not... A whole different thing but these guys i mean it, they're the real deal in that so i'm this is a great album from 1980. well the the class were pretty popular in america yeah yep i mean obviously after that uh mtv even blew them up more with uh rock the casbah you know Combat rock. Than, which i love that too i mean but i again i saw them twice uh 
79 and 80, I guess, or whatever. I don't know exact dates, but when they toured America and they were medium, medium sized club. I didn't see them later at when they got bigger, you know, I yeah. just kind of stopped. Not that I didn't like the bands when I love that they're getting a larger audience, but I like yeah. you know, paying five, six, seven dollars in a, you know, maybe a 200 place or a small club. You yeah. Know? I prefer that intimacy yep. than going to an arena. Right. All right. You want, you want me to show another one? Yeah, we'll keep going until we until we if we get cut off automatically. We got time now. Oh, good choice. I didn't pick this one. How come? You know, I don't know. I love it. Okay. It's a great record. Well, you can't pick every. I didn't want to pull every 1980 record. That that single's one of my favorite singles once in a lifetime. So I didn't know anything about the Talking Heads because. They've not had any hit singles in 980. So when I heard Once in a Lifetime, I'd heard the name Talking Heads, but I'd never actually investigated them. Because don't forget, we're talking 1980 here. So how I got my music information was like the musical ex New Musical Express. You know, you couldn't go online, you could stream music. So it was pretty hand to mouth, really. So when a band like the Talking Heads had a hit with, once in a lifetime. It's just, it's just one of my favorite singles of all time. So yeah. I didn't get this at the time. This is a record that I bought, you know, years ago. But I mean, the last track, The Overload on this album, just sounds like Joy Division. Wow. It's, yeah. I played it, I was streaming it at work. And yeah, have you got closer there? I, you know, I just, I thought it closer and I forgot to pull that too. Maybe, maybe you have it. I yeah. haven't got it because my son's got it. Oh, I have closer, but I didn't pull it. Oh, well. It's you okay. Know? Well, we can talk about closer. I got but, my next album after that is a little small too. Go ahead. Well, the overload, I played it yesterday to a guy at work and I said, who's this? And he just said, it's Joy Division. I said, no, it's not. It's Talking Heads. And it just, I mean, this came out after Closer. Yeah. And I was kind of looking online to see, because when I listen to the Talking Heads, like there's a lot of sort of an African kind of vibe to the the music. Especially and, starting in their third or fourth album. Um, yeah. The one with the black uh, cover uh, that looks like a manhole. Fear of music. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and so when I listened to this album, it was a, quite a progression from those sort of earlier albums. But after this album, I think there was quite a break between this maybe and the next album. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. Like the Tom Tom Club, they they Is started that speaking in tongues stuff. after that. Yeah, wasn't that like a live? Was that a live album? Oh well, there was no. a double live one after that. But I, but yeah. speaking in tongues with the circle and the yellowish cover. Um, yeah, I can't remember if that was two after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I really like this album. This is hey, um, good choice. Probably my favorite Talking Heads album. Okay. But it was really interesting because, like, Joy Division were going to um, tour America, of course. And then Ian Curtis, sadly. Yeah. And, um, yeah. but I wanted to talk about Joy Division a little bit because, you know, they were just a massive part of like Manchester music, right. Factory Records, uh, Tony Wilson, Factory Records. Just a real, I mean, they kind of epitomized Manchester really at that time. Um, the sound. An important band for a while that represent that whole man. I mean, at least from my point of view, my whole thing of Manchester would be uh, yeah. Joy Division as the first, the major. Horse. Yeah. And then to sort of reincarnate themselves into New Order as well, yeah. who, you know, I really like New Order as well. And then we have the Smiths. So, but yeah, Joy Division were, you know, if I was showing that album, that's what probably my second favorite album from 1980. Um, okay. But like I say, like a lot of my records, they disappeared to my son's soul. Um, it's just one of those things. Is your, what music's your son into? He's into all kinds, I mean, I brainwashed him. He has a, my hard drive of all, all my CDs. He doesn't buy records. He's in San no. Francisco still. He's in all kinds of stuff, but then he listened, like he does some animation. So he's listening to some electronic stuff a lot just because it's a good mood when you're working on the computer yeah. a lot. But I mean, he'll like Tom Waits and 
and uh, like some, he doesn't probably listen to the Beatles because I listen to so much, but he'll listen yeah. to a little of everything. I, you know, I brainwashed him early on. So anyway, all right. I'm, I'm, gonna... trying, I'm trying to get, I'm trying to get my son to join the VC. Well, is he, does he, he live in Manchester? No, he lives in Sheffield. You've been to Sheffield. Yeah, I've been to Sheffield. Yeah, 1980. But he... But he doesn't, he doesn't even know I've got a channel, so I need to uh, tell him that first, don't I? You, know, it, you can't force, you can't force no. these kids into anything, so. No, uh, okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hardly say anything about this because it's gonna be over the top commercial schmaltzy, but it's an important, the single is what is important about this. V video killed the radio okay. star, the buggles, Trouble, mm -hmm. Trevor Horn, and uh, I forget the other yeah. guy's name. Um, yeah, which I didn't even know. I was looking at this up. I didn't realize after they split up after two years, these two guys joined Yes for a while. I had yeah. no idea. I, yeah. You know. Anyway, what's important about this? This was a huge hit, very pop, very commercial. But f several years later, that was the very first song MTV ever played yeah. and went on the air. So that's all I want to say about it because I don't want to say much about it. V Video killed the radio star is an absolute classic. It's a great single, great pop it's single. It's a great, if, if you haven't heard that, if, you haven't, if you've not heard that single for a long time and it comes on, you can't help but feel good. It's a great song. Total, yeah. So, next. Ah. The beat? Nice. Yeah. Yep. There was Just a, it. that's funny when that came out because there was a uh, group here called The Beat and they were The Beat. So they had to go to The English Beat and here they call it The Paul right. Collins Beat. That's right, yeah. So, I mean, The Beat were, there was a huge sort of ska thing going on um, in 1980 in the UK, 79, 80. Um, and me and my friends were really into it. So, you know, I chose my friends really going off what music they liked. So, you know, me, you know, there was a group of guys who liked Queen and ELO. So we left them well alone. <laughs> I and loved ELO. Was, <laughs> yeah, well, I wouldn't have bothered with you. So, <laughs> right. <laughs> but like, you would have beat like, me up in high school. Like Dexys as well. I don't so, have that record anymore. I have the second one, the one with uh, Come On Eileen. I don't have that. Yeah, one. Dude, I, I, I need to get that one. Yeah. Yeah. I used to have it. So, and there was like this one as like selector as well. Yeah, I have that. I didn't pick. So that. and this one, you got to roll. It. You know, specials. I should have all those. And during my mid nineties purge, for some reason, yeah. I was trying to get those on CD, and I got rid of them. Well, all these records kind of go together for me because, uh, uh, along with Madness, so they were all bands that we all kind of just loved, really. Um, yeah. You know, when you're 15, 16, you're kind of that age, you're sort of discovering girls. So you're hanging around with the guys who get the girlfriends and um, swapping records. A lot of records I didn't own, but I'd have other records that other people wanted, so you kind of swap music. So instead of streaming music now, we just used to swap swap records, and that was a great way of discovering music because I just didn't have the money to go and buy albums. You know, if I bought an album, it was a special occasion. It was a birthday, Christmas, you know, saved up. I was a singles guy between sort of... I was lucky years. being in the record business. So I either got promos or freebies or got them cheaper, or could trade them around. Yeah. So I built a big collection then. Yes. Mad Madness were a really uh, big band in the UK as well. They were a band they were really into as well. So I'm not sure what success they had in America, but in the UK, well, they probably... Yeah, there was a big thing of... of uh, I actually have also on that CD, there's the um, the Ska CD with the select, the, the Twin Tone, or Two Tone, is it Two Tone? Two Tone, yeah. I always get confused because Twin Tone was the uh, Minneapolis label with, uh, like, Husk, not Husker Du, um, the, uh, the, anyway, what's the Graham that let it be with Chris Mars? And anyway, I'm blanking out right now. <laughs> um, yeah, they were. They had a moment here. I mean, they had a few years here. It's funny. In 1980, I, you know, I was I was in the punk and the post punk movement, and I left all the 70s excess prog and country like Eagles shit behind for a while. Although the one band I or the one artist I see in here that I still loved at that time because I since 1974 five I'd been into them. But I'm going to say the River Bruce Springsteen because this is an important record and. 
kind of was a huge hit here, obviously, with that, uh, the, yeah. I mean, this is an important record. And, yeah. And, um, I mean, double record, it just had a great, that song, um, hmm. took the wife and kids in Baltimore, Jack. With um, the back, yeah. yeah, with the back uh, round vocals of uh, yeah. Flo and Eddie from the Turtles and, and Zappa. Love it. That's all I'll say. Yeah. I don't need to say more about that. Everybody knows this record. Yeah, I mean, Bruce, me and Bruce Springsteen, it's kind of, I bought that album last year uh, because yeah. I always feel like I should like Bruce Springsteen or love Bruce Springsteen, but I'm, I'm not sure I do. So don't I, force I it. That. It's okay. No. No period. But I bought, I bought his, his new album and I enjoyed that. New album's great. Yeah. So yeah. it's, I think with Bruce Springsteen, you've just got to be in the zone. And sometimes yeah. I'm not in that zone. But if I'm in that, because you don't see a lot of people in the UK showing Bruce Springsteen. No. But I've got, I've got such a lot of respect for Bruce Springsteen because in the UK, in, in the 80s, when we had the miners' strike, Bruce Springsteen was playing a gig in Newcastle. And he donated quite a substantial amount of money to the families of the miners. And that speaks a lot about the guy. So yeah, good he thing. doesn't, yeah, good he doesn't union forget man. where he's yeah. from. Yeah. We got about four to five minutes, so we should uh, go ahead. Uh, what about Kate Bush? I pull that and I put it back. Babushka. Yeah, well. I love she, Kate Bush. Yeah, I mean, she should have, she was going to tour with Fleetwood Mac um, for Tusk, I think. And she pulled out. Now, if she had probably gone on that tour, uh, you know, her success in America, I'm not sure how successful she is in America. In the UK, she's a bit of a sort of national treasure. Yeah. I love Kate Bush. And well, this the first is day I arrived in London in, in 78 on the radio, I think I've said this in a video before, I heard on the yeah. radio, Wuthering Heights, I bought the single yeah. the day. Um, yeah. The only big thing she had here, the huge, the huge one was um, Running Up That Hill. That was huge. Yeah. And that video yeah. and TV stuff. Yeah, I still think she's a little bit underrated, but I love Kate Bush. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to show these together only because this is the LA San Francisco punk thing. Probably my two favorite punk bands, uh, uh, the Dead Kennedys. I used to see oh, yeah. San Francisco all the time, and I saw X every time they came to San Francisco. So I'm going to quickly show those two, and then I have one more thing after that. After you do yours, but these are okay. important records. Yeah, I'd like to have that Dead Kennedy's album. Steely Dan. Ah, Gaucho. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, me and Steely Dan, it, Dan, it's kind of a strange combination, but there's just something about them I can't explain. In 78, was that film FM? Uh, yes. About, about yeah. the radio station. And there was a song called FM that Steely Dan did. I was listening to all sorts of random music, punk, new wave, whatever. And that song I loved. And from then on, I sort of trickled to get Steely Dan albums in my collection. I think I've got them all now. So I'm a big fan of Steely Dan. So I really like this album as well. Good one. Hey 19 and Deacon Blues. Is it on there? Oh, I'm going to close down. Hey, oh, sorry. Babylon. Okay. No, it's a sorry. No, hey. go on. What else have you got? I'm just going to close out with these just because... In spring, when I got there, there's a big display at HMV on Oxford Street of this record, uh, McCartney yeah. 2, his second solo. But I need to end the year on a bummer with the other one. Um, I got this record uh, November, early <laughs> December, at 12 inch of um, Just Like Starting Over. And I heard yeah. that song, John Lennon hadn't done in five years, his return. I liked it, but when I flipped it over and heard Kiss, 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 uh, by Yoko. I thought that was the better song. It's kind of like a B-52 song. It was so great. Then, of course, the album came out. Um, yeah. The funny thing is, we did our book, and, and the night I got a promo, of, I got two promos of Kiss, 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 and my buddy who I did the Beatle book with came over, and I gave him a copy. This is the night uh, in November okay. 1980, wow. where I gave David a copy and then, of course, the next month, we know what happened. Uh, then. Yeah. So a, a year of great music started out great, ended up fucked yeah. up because of what happened. Yeah. I like that album. Showing. I like that album.
Yeah. Yeah. I like the back and forth with John and Yoko. You know, some people yeah. like to dump on Yoko, but she, I mean, no. the, the production of that is great. Some of her songs oh. are interesting, but I like them both. I love watching the wheels. I love that song. Yeah. Yeah. It's a great song. Your turn. Anything else? Oh, another one. You can end it. Yeah. Your closing, your closing record. Closing record. Um, let's have a bit of fun. The Vapors. Turning Japanese? Yeah. They I really with, think so. Yeah, they toured with the jam in 1980. And people get very excited when you show this record um, on the East. Because like, people in America seem to have like, a soft spot for the Vapors. And they're actually uh, was going to tour the jam of, there's another jam band with a few members from the jam, the other members, and the, the Vapors were going to tour with them. I'm not sure where that's going to go ahead with what's going on in the world, all the craziness. But yeah, the Vapors, this, I love the album sleeve as well. New Clear Days. I had that record, and that again, that's one of the friggin' records in the mid 90s yeah. purge I got rid of. It's almost yeah, like a one hit wonder to some Americans, but that one song. Yeah. Yeah, one of the wonders in the UK, but there's some good songs on here, and it, it's like uh, nostalgia. It's not what it used to be, is it? But I love this album. All right, yeah. well, we're going to close out here. Thanks, Rob. Um, next time we'll get you in landscape. We got to figure that out. And yeah. uh, if someone in the comments can tell us on a phone how you do the settings, because I had this problem, I think, with either John or Jeff Kempen um, to get landscape, because I'm using a laptop. But I've done a few phones and they've set the, I don't know how to do it. Anyway, it's too technical for me. I do apologize. No, it doesn't matter. I mean, but it's just kind of nice, you know, it's yeah. UK. Okay. Our connection, the pipe from Seattle yeah. to Manchester, England is uh, short. But have yeah. a great weekend. And um, Mazzy, yeah, thanks for letting me come up. Cheers, Mazzy. It was fun. Take care. Yeah.